Please like and subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. The Detroit Police Department experimented with radio dispatched cars as early as 1922, and this technology was quickly adopted by other municipalities. The mobile radio technology developed during World War II set the stage for widespread deployment of two-way radio in civilian and municipal applications in post-war America. The detonation of the Soviet Union's first atomic bomb, in 1949, raised fears of a Soviet attack on the United States, and the U.S. Office of Civil Defense ramped up its efforts to engage both citizens and local governments to prepare for an attack. In the United States, the sheer power of nuclear weapons, and the perceived likelihood of such an attack precipitated a greater response than had yet been required of civil defense. Civil defense, previously considered an important and common-sense step, became divisive and controversial in the charged atmosphere of the Cold War. In 1951, the General Electric Company made this movie about how mobile radio could be a part of a local government's response to a Soviet attack. Filmed in Syracuse, New York, the home of General Electric's mobile radio business, it shows one of the first examples of what has evolved into the modern emergency communication system. Okay, just now, look and see. Hello? That's all. It is? Are you sure? Are you sure everything's turned off? All right, I'll be home in about an hour. Goodbye, dear. In the many small emergencies of daily life, as well as in times of major crisis, the American people rely on their great nationwide system of communication services. In every phase of private, business, or community life, there is the means of summoning help or of securing information from any part of the nation or the world. Typical of many U.S. industrial cities is Syracuse, New York. Because of its strategic factories, Syracuse fills an important role in the nation's overall economy. Syracuse has its entertainment centers as well as a bustling business life. The city takes pride in the excellence of its municipal service departments and in its school system, which is among the best in the nation. Coordinating these varied community activities and uniting the city with other parts of America are its vital lines of communication. At the city airport, air traffic is controlled by a smoothly operating system of ground air radio. At the railroad station, telephone and telegraph messages direct the trains which bring vital supplies to the city and carry away the products of local factories. News dispatches from all parts of the world are rushed immediately to the public by many different communication systems, often while events reported are still in progress. In the home life of the Norton family, communications of all kinds are important. They count on their newspapers to keep them informed of local as well as international events. They look to radio and television, not only for information, but also for entertainment. And for most emergencies, there is the telephone. Hello, Star Taxi. I'm at 223 Dorset Road. I've got to be at the airport at 420. Can you make it? You make it all right, sir. Thank you. Rest jab. 
Number 49, 223 Dorset Road, an airport job, Russia. Number 49, 223 Dorset Road, an airport job, Russia. 23 Dorset Road. You're there now. Okay. Of key importance among communications in many American cities is two-way radio. For many everyday activities, this is the quickest way of coordinating operations. Mr. Norton, like many Americans, has long taken this kind of service for granted. One American who does not take his communications for granted is young Chris Norton. For more than a year now, Chris has been a radio amateur, a ham. One of the more than 80,000 Americans who make a serious hobby of shortwave radio. With his home assembled rig, Chris has spoken to other amateurs in all parts of the world. For construction crews like those of the Kravec Company, two-way radio is much more than a hobby. During the course of a routine day, the foreman makes dozens of calls for additional men and materials and to report on progress. Occasionally, an emergency arises. Hello, Bill. There's been an accident up on the highway alongside where we're working. Two cars. About six people. One needs help badly. Within a few minutes, the Kravec office has notified a city hospital. Calling Mobile 2. Calling Mobile 2. Calling Mobile 2. Dr. Scott speaking. Where are you? We're on our way back. It's in an accident on Highway 11, just beyond South Bay Road. Okay, we'll go right over. Less than five minutes after the foreman's call, the radio-directed ambulance arrives on the scene, and the life is saved. During every important community crisis, two-way radio is called into play by the public safety departments of Syracuse. Sixty-three, message received. Six-three. Here we go, Herb. Prompt and efficient teamwork by the city departments aids in getting the blaze under control. Chief Conley talking. Send me two pumpers and a hook and ladder. The utility rig and the lighting company shut off the gas main. There's a main valve half a block off the fire. Get there as fast as you can and turn it off. Right. Go ahead. Fire at Borden and McLennan. Get over there and keep us posted. Okay. Hi, Red. How you doing? Just about over now. No one killed. Two women and three children were overcome by smoke, but they're expected to recover okay. The owner estimates the damage at about uh, $25,000. Over the years, two-way radio has become an essential part of community life in America. It has helped to save thousands of lives and millions of dollars in property. It has proved its worth time and time again. At the most unexpected times, Cities throughout the world have been exposed to destruction from floods, storms, fires, earthquakes, and other disasters. At these times, the lives of those in the community depend on the efficiency with which rescue teams can work together. Today, as in all the major industrial centers of the nation, civic leaders in Syracuse are laying plans to meet the gravest emergency their city can possibly face. Of paramount importance in their planning is the role of two-way radio at a time when other communications facilities may become inoperative. Colonel, our communication men are holding a meeting next Tuesday. Do you suppose you could be on hand to tell us something about the situation which we may have to face? 
Sure, I'll make it a point to be there. Fine. You've done a good job in setting up our station, Jim. Is it operating now? Oh, yes. We always have a man on duty, and there's a large auxiliary group standing by. I'd like to see your setup. Well, I think that could be arranged. Do you have time to see it today? I think so. Fine. Communications center for all civil defense operations in Syracuse is the headquarters equipped with two-way radio. In any citywide emergency, this radio center would become the coordination point for all essential community activities. And the life of the city would depend upon the uninterrupted functioning of its equipment. We charted every two-way radio station and mobile unit in the city. We've over 400 of the mobile rigs here. Most cities don't realize how many they have until they count them. Now, this unit over here is a console. Uh, Jack is our head operator. You tell the colonel about this unit, Jack? Okay. We've got over a dozen different radio systems here, colonel. Police department, fire department, ambulances, hospitals, five cab companies, construction company, power company, county highway department, and so on. I see. What was on over here? Well, as you probably know, Colonel, this is the operations table. Since we're the coordinating center, of course, we'll have our civil defense officials here. And in addition, uh, we'll have working at this table the officials of cooperating city departments and private companies. That way, the officials who normally run these activities will be in charge of their own men. What's that out there? Emergency power? That's right. We figure if the telephone lines are down, the power lines will be too. That's why our mobile units are so important. They'll operate on their car batteries. Now, a lot of the key stations in our network have generators like this one. And the fire and police departments have standby stations to take over in case the main station is hit. If both of them are knocked out, we can take over for them. Oh, the hams have their own emergency hookup too that ties in with us. I'd like to have you meet one of them, Colonel. Chris Norton, Colonel Cavanaugh. Chris goes to the university here. If there's an emergency, the radio amateurs will be on hand to help operate the station and keep check on the equipment. Well, uh, where does this fit in the picture? Well, it operates on the amateur frequencies. About, oh, 20 of us have mobile rigs. This uh, keeps them in contact with headquarters. Thank you, Chris. Well, there's only one thing more I can think of. What if this station goes out, or your men can't get to it? We've built this station away from likely targets, but just in case, we're building a mobile station equipped like this one. It'll be kept a long way out of the city, ready to move in in the event this one is damaged. It's all part of our civil defense plan for communications, defense, and depth. As you can see, we can't predict the kind of raid that might take place or how your city would be affected. What I have told you, with some reservations for security reasons, represents the best information we have to date. It will be up to those of you here in the audience who have volunteered or have been assigned to civil defense work with your self-powered and mobile two-way radio to maintain contact with the various contingents of defense workers. Colonel Cavanaugh has given you a picture of what might happen to Syracuse in the event of an attack. Now let's visualize this attack on Syracuse. Our factories are humming as usual. Our power and communication lines are still functioning to make our lives easy and efficient. Clinton Square is bright and serene in the sunshine. Downtown, it's a busy day. Stores and streets are crowded. A typical day in the lives of millions of Americans to whom war has always seemed so far away. And then...
Department operating from standby station. No other stations reporting. We've taken over for the non operating stations. How about the mobile units? About two thirds reporting. Amateur cars one, three, and four. Amateur cars one, three, and four. Pick up plasma at depot F and get over to dispatch center three. Calling Gravec Foreman. Come in, Gravec. Come in, Gravec. Gravec Foreman, go ahead. We'll need a couple of bulldozers down the Clinton Square area. Get over to dispatch center three and stand by till I tell you it's safe. Right. Get your cabs at dispatch center three. Have them wait till I get a report on radiation. Right. Are you getting through to Utica? Yeah, trucks are on their way. Rochester's have been notified. They're getting their ambushes together now. Good. Hello. Hello. Call the radiologist at Clinton Square. He's in medical car two. Calling medical car two. Calling medical car two. Come in, radiologist. Come in, radiologist. Medical car two. Be safe here in a few minutes. Call you as soon as I'm sure. Yeah, that's right. Worker in Montrose. Power lines across the road. Popping all over. Can you make it? Yeah, I think I'll make it. Car 9, car 9. High line down to Worker in Montrose. Get there as fast as I can. I'm near the university. Are the roads clear? Stay away from Clinton Square. Right. It's okay now. Radiation safe now. Crews can come in. It's all clear. Good. Dispatch Center 3. Dispatch Center 3. All clear in the Clinton Square area. Cravick crew move in first. Medical cars follow. Cabs evacuate as many as you can to the state fairgrounds. It's pretty clear now in Erie Boulevard. Call in if you hit any bottlenecks. Call in if you hit any bottlenecks. Right. We're on our way. Okay, folks. Let's go. Follow me. Park Hill School's burning bad. Is there any kids in there? Over 300. Chiefs, there's a bad in the Park Hill School. Oh, that's terrible. Where are you now? New Sheila Park, Senate Control here. You better get over to Park Hill School. Right. And go by the way of Grant Boulevard. And stay off at James Street. It's all fouled up. Right. A police car will direct you when you get close. Make it fast. Get that, Dr. Scott. Uh, yeah, Park Hill School. We got four ambulances with us. They're from out of town, don't have radio. Shall I take them all, or can you use some of them elsewhere? Better keep them with you. Things are getting under control over at Clinton Square, but the school situation looks pretty bad. Cut around Genesee Street. Take your second left. You can't make it on state. Follow them. Just past a good half mile on the boulevard. Near the railroad now. Road blocked up ahead with wreckage. Okay, we'll get it cleared. Keep it posted as you move along. Hey, John, another roadblock out on State Fair Boulevard near the overpass. Okay. Highway Crew 3. Highway Crew 3. Come in, please. Come in, please. Crew 3 reporting. Got another job for you. Get ready, boys. Here we go again. Lawyer's almost out at the school. Are the children all out? I believe so. We're taking account now. Good work. The kids are all out. That's great, Jay. The job of coordinating this city's civil defense communications may last for days, possibly as long as a week. We'll never really know what the job will be until we're actually faced with it. We may never have to face it at all. 
But I think that we can say that as far as communications are concerned, Syracuse is ready for any emergency. Because the people of Syracuse have prepared themselves with wisdom and foresight, they can today enjoy life in the fullest measure. Chris, dinner's ready. Okay, Mom, coming. Theirs is the sense of security and well-being, which is the real strength of a nation dedicated to peace and freedom confident of the future. Please like and subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates.